FA-18 Hornet, which was created as the first all-weather fighter and attack aircraft for the U.S. military, brought in a new era of naval aviation. The Hornet's capacity to perform conventional attack missions without losing fighter capabilities led to its rapid adoption as a mainstay of the U.S. Navy's fleet. Come along as we examine the history of the FA-18 Super Hornet, from its modest origins to its significant contribution to contemporary naval aviation. The United States Navy initiated the Naval Fighter Attack Experimental VFAX program with the aim of procuring a versatile aircraft to replace several existing models, including the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk, the A-7 Corsair II, and the remaining McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom IIs, while also complementing the Grumman F-14 Tomcat. Vice Admiral Kent Lee, then head of Naval Air Systems Command, championed the VFAX program despite facing significant opposition, notably from Vice Admiral William D. Hauser, who served as the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Air Warfare at the time. In August 1973, Congress directed the Navy to explore a more cost-effective alternative to the F-14. Grumman proposed a modified version of the F-14 known as the F-14X, while McDonnell Douglas suggested a naval variant of the F-15. However, both proposals were deemed nearly as expensive as the F-14 itself. To address this concern, Secretary of Defense James R. Schlesinger instructed the Navy to assess two contenders for the Air Force's Lightweight Fighter, or LWF, program, the General Dynamics YF-16 and the Northrop YF-17. The Navy's skepticism about the suitability of a single-engine aircraft like the YF-16 for carrier operations led to their selection of the YF-17 instead on May 2, 1975. Northrop had partnered with McDonnell Douglas on the NACF program, leveraging McDonnell Douglas's expertise in carrier aircraft like the F-4 Phantom II. The F-A-18, initially referred to as McDonnell Douglas Model 267, underwent significant modifications from the YF-17 to meet Navy requirements. For carrier operations, the F-A-18's airframe, undercarriage, and tail hook were strengthened, and features like folding wings and catapult attachments were added. The landing gear was widened, and an additional wheel was installed on the front landing gear. Fuel capacity was increased by enlarging the dorsal spine and adding extra fuel tanks to the wings. Changes were made to the wings and stabilators, including the addition of a snag to prevent aeroelastic flutter. The engines were also canted outward at the front. The FE-18 featured a fully digital fly-by-wire control system with quadruple redundancy, a first for a production fighter at the time. Originally, plans were in place to acquire 780 aircraft across three variants. The single-seat FA-18 fighter, an A-18A attack aircraft, and the dual-seat TF-18A. However, improvements in avionics and redesigns of external store stations allowed for the combination of the A-18A and F-18A variants into a single aircraft, leading to the adoption of the F-A-18A designation starting in 1980. The TF-18A was redesignated as the F-A-18B, the F A 18 was an early adopter of multifunction displays, allowing pilots to switch between fighter and attack roles seamlessly. This capability, termed a force multiplier, provides operational commanders with increased flexibility in dynamic battle scenarios. Additionally, the Hornet was the first Navy aircraft to incorporate a digital multiplexing avionics bus, facilitating easy upgrades. Designed for reduced maintenance requirements, the F-A-18 boasts significantly lower downtime compared to heavier counterparts like the F-14 Tomcat and A-6 Intruder. Its mean time between failures is notably higher, requiring only half the maintenance time of other Navy strike aircraft. The General Electric F-404 engines prioritize operability, reliability, and maintainability, demonstrating exceptional robustness and resistance to stall and flameout. The engines can be replaced by a four-person team within 20 minutes, showcasing the aircraft's ease of maintenance. 
With a top speed of Mach 1.8 at 40,000 feet, the F-A-18 excels in both air-to-air -air combat and complex strike missions. The aircraft's engine air inlets feature a simpler fixed design similar to the F-16, enhancing reliability and maintainability. Studies have shown that single-seat fighters are well-suited for air-to-air -air combat missions, while dual-seat fighters are preferable for complex strike missions against heavy air and ground defenses, particularly in adverse weather conditions. The F-A-18 Hornet family encompasses various models tailored for specific roles and capabilities. The F-A-18A, the single-seat variant, is equipped to employ a range of weapons, including the AGM-84 Harpoon, the AGM-65E Maverick, the AG-88 Harm, and the AGM-62 Walleye 1 and 2. Additionally, it features the AN-AAS-38 Nighthawk targeting pod and the ANASQ-173 laser spot tracker for precise targeting. The two-seat variant, the FA-18B, retains full combat capability while primarily serving as a training platform, achieved through the relocation of avionics equipment and a slight reduction in internal fuel capacity. Upgrades in 1992 introduced the AN-APG-73 radar to replace the original AN-APG-65 radar, enhancing the aircraft's radar capabilities significantly. Hornets upgraded with the AN-APG-73 and capable of carrying the AIM-120 AMRAM are designated the FA-18A+. The FA-18C and D models, resulting from a block upgrade in 1987, incorporated advanced radar, avionics, and the ability to carry new missiles like the AIM-120 AMRAAM and the AGM-84E SLAM. Night attack capabilities were improved with the addition of thermal navigation pods, FLIR targeting pods, night vision goggles, and color multifunction displays. The FA-18D, the two-seat variant, is utilized for training and as an all-weather strike aircraft. A variant of the FA-18D, designated the FA-18DRC, is configured for reconnaissance and can be equipped with the ATAR's electric optical sensor package. Engine enhancements and additional upgrades over the years have further improved performance and operational capabilities. Production of the FA-18C and D models ceased in 2000, with the last deliveries made to the Finnish Air Force and the U.S. Marine Corps. While the U.S. Navy retired its FA-18C and D fleet in February of 2019, the USMC continues to operate theirs, with plans to upgrade their radar systems. Additionally, the Super Hornet family, including the FA-18E single-seat variant, and the FA-18F two-seat variant offers expanded capabilities with a larger airframe, more powerful engines, and upgraded avionics. The EA-18G Growler, based on the FA-18F platform, serves as an electronic warfare version and has replaced the Navy's EA-6B Prowler. The FA-18 saw its first deployment with Navy Strike Fighter Squadrons, VFA-25 and VFA-113, aboard the USS Constellation from February to August 1985. Initial fleet reports praised the Hornet's exceptional reliability, a significant improvement over its predecessor, the F-4J. In January 1985, squadrons VFA-131 Wildcats and VFA-132 Privateers relocated from Naval Air Station Lemoore, California to Naval Air Station Cecil Field, Florida becoming the Atlantic Fleet's first F-A-18 squadrons. Other squadrons, including the VFA-151, the VFA-161, the VFA-192, and VFA-195, transitioned to the F-A-18 in subsequent years. The F-A-18 Hornet has established a rich combat history, participating in numerous conflicts and operations around the globe. Notably, during the Gulf War in 1990 and 1991, Hornets played a pivotal role in Operation Desert Storm, conducting a wide array of missions, such as precision bombing runs on Iraqi targets, suppression of enemy air defenses, close air support for ground forces, and combat air patrols to safeguard coalition aircraft. 
The Hornet's versatility and effectiveness were showcased as it operated in the challenging desert environment of Iraq. Throughout the 1990s, the Hornet continued to see action in conflicts such as the Balkans, where it was deployed in support of NATO operations during the Bosnian and Kosovo Wars. Hornets conducted airstrikes against Serbian forces and provided crucial reconnaissance and surveillance capabilities, contributing to the overall NATO mission objectives. In the post-9-11 era, the F-A-18 Hornets have been extensively involved in ongoing conflicts, such as Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan and Operation Iraqi Freedom in Iraq. In these operations, Hornets have conducted close air support missions, aerial reconnaissance, and airstrikes against the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS forces, demonstrating their adaptability and reliability in modern combat scenarios. Additionally, the Hornet has played a significant role in more recent conflicts, including the Libyan Civil War and the Syrian Civil War. In Libya, Hornets were part of the international coalition that conducted airstrikes against government forces, while in Syria and Iraq, they have been deployed as part of the U.S.-led coalition against ISIS, carrying out precision strikes against military targets and providing critical air support for ground operations. The F-A-18 Hornet has seen extensive international adoption, with several foreign air services operating variants similar to those of the United States. Purchased Hornets are typically comparable to U.S. models of similar manufacture dates albeit with certain modifications tailored to the specific requirements of each country. Notably, none of the export customers operate aircraft carriers, resulting in the omission of the automatic carrier landing system from export models. For instance, the Royal Australian Air Force further modified their Hornets by removing the catapult attachment on the nose gear. Canada stands out as the largest operator of Hornets outside of the U.S having been the first export customer for the aircraft. The Canadian Forces Air Command ordered a significant number of A and B models, which were nearly identical to their U.S. counterparts. These aircraft have played crucial roles in various operations, including the Gulf War and missions over Yugoslavia. Similarly, other countries like Finland, Kuwait, Malaysia, Spain, and Switzerland have also integrated the F-A-18 into their air forces employing them in diverse roles, ranging from air defense to ground attack. So, the F-A-18 Hornet family represents a pinnacle of aviation engineering, with each variant finely tuned to meet specific mission requirements. From the versatile F-A-18AB models, to the advanced F-A-18EF Super Hornets, and the electronic warfare capabilities of the EA-18G Growler. These aircraft have left an indelible mark on modern military aviation. But what do you think? Which variant of the F-A-18 Hornet do you find most impressive? And why? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content on aviation, military history, and technology. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.